Hello English 8 and welcome to your very first very valuable vocab video. I'm glad you've tuned in to watch. Today we're going to cover all 20 words in Unit 1. Hopefully something you hear or see will help you remember these words better as you try to use them in your writing and memorize them for your quiz. So as a part of these videos, I'll give you the definition, I'll use the words in a sentence, and if possible, I'll try to provide you with a mnemonic device or memory aid to help you recall these words more easily. I may also throw in various pictures or usages in real life to try and help drive these words into your memory. Okay, you ready? Let's start with word number one. All right, word number one is adulterate. It's a verb. It means to corrupt, to make worse by the addition of something of lesser value. So you could say, um, chemists take great care to make sure that nothing adulterates the purity of their chemical sample. A way you can remember is to think of adultery. Adultery meaning uh, having a relationship with someone outside of your marriage. In that case, you're corrupting the bonds of marriage by adding in a lesser element to the, um, to the relationship. Adulterate. The next word is ambidextrous. It's an adjective. It means able to use both hands equally well, skillful, deceitful. So an aspect of like cleverness, you know. Um, you could say that President James Garfield was ambidextrous. He could write Latin with one hand and Greek with the other. And that's for real. The next word is augment. It's a verb. It means to make larger or increase. Some families have to augment their income with second and third jobs in order to make mortgage payments. Augment. The next word is bereft. It's an adjective. It means made unhappy through a loss, to be without. So you could say that in times of trouble, people often feel as though they are bereft of counsel. There's no one who understands their situation. You could also say that if you live to be very old, you may be bereft of friendships. Depressing. Okay, the next word is deploy. It's a verb, means to organize, to arrange, to form up. So you could say, the general deployed all his troops at once against the enemy, hoping that the onslaught would confuse the opposing commander. The next word is dour. It means stern, gloomy, ill-tempered. My first grade teacher had a dour countenance, and we weren't even sure if she even liked children. A good way to remember the word dour is to think that it looks a lot like the word sour, and if you're a dour person, you also have a sour outlook on life. Plus, they even look like they walk around sucking on lemons all day. Alright, the next word is fortitude. It's a noun. It means courage in facing difficulties. So, the people of New Orleans showed great fortitude when they rebounded from the devastation of Hurricane Katrina. Fortitude. So, the word fort, F-O-R-T, is a strong place, a place where soldiers live. So, people that live in forts often display great courage or fortitude. The word fort uh, also has its root in Latin, fortis, F-O-R-T-I-S meaning strength, strong. The next word is gape. It's a verb. It means to open wide, to stare with open mouth, to have your mouth wide open, to gape. So, when I saw the beauty of the Grand Canyon, I gaped at the wondrous sight. You can remember the word gape if you just think of like a gaping hole. So if you're gaping at something, you have a gaping hole in your face, like this. Gaping hole. The next word is jive. It has two parts of speech. It can be used as a verb or a noun. As a verb, it can be to utter an expression of scorn. So, the boy rushed into the football game so no one could jive at him for being afraid. Um, and as a noun, it just means an expression of scorn, an expression of distaste. Voters may be turned off by candidates who use excessive jives in advertisements against their opponents. The next word is guys. It's a noun. It means external appearance, a cover, a mask. So you could say, the thieves gained entry into my house under the guise of police officers. So, guise is pretty easy to remember because it looks like disguise. 
meaning, you know, to alter your appearance in some way. So if you're in the guise of a police officer, you're disguising yourself as a cop. The next word is insidious. It's an adjective. It means designed to ensnare or entrap, sly, underhanded, insidious, sneaky. So you could say that there was an insidious plot to assassinate Julius Caesar that was put together by Brutus. Insidious to me just sounds like a sneaky bad word, like insidious, like a snake. So if you're sneaky, snaky, not to be trusted, you are insidious. The next word is intimation. It's a noun. It means a hint, an indirect suggestion. You could say there were intimations that perhaps the new president was not quite fit for his office. Intimations. Something you say maybe behind someone's back. I remember this word by thinking of the word intimate. So you only would say something that you intimate to your most intimate friends. To everyone else, you have to keep it a secret. You have to keep it indirect. You have to make sure you speak in intimations. The next word is opulent. It's an adjective. It means wealthy, luxurious, grand. So the opulent palace was decorated with gold, silver, and precious stones inlaid in the walls. Okay, the next word is pliable. Pliable is an adjective. It means easily bent, flexible, easily influenced. So you can use pliable in a literal sense, like, oh, this copper wire is very pliable. Or you could use it to describe a person. Say, that congressman is well known for being pliable. It's very easy for corporations to influence his votes. The next word is reiterate. Reiterate's a verb. It means to say again or repeat. So in your essays, it may be a good idea to reiterate your central thesis and say it over and over and over again. So it, you can think about that re prefix, like to repeat something, to reiterate, to say it over and over and over again. Repeat, reiterate. The next word is stolid. It's an adjective. It means not easily moved physically or emotionally, dull, unresponsive. So you could say a stolid person is one who is not easily influenced by what's going on around him. One way that I remember this word is stolid is an awful lot like the word solid. It looks the same, it sounds the same, and a solid person is usually not swayed by the winds of change either. They are not easily moved, physically or emotionally. The next word is tentative. It means uncertain in nature, hesitant, experimental. So. In soccer, it's best to not be tentative on the field, otherwise your opponent's already gone around you. You could also say that a tentative solution was proposed to end the government shutdown, but as yet, there's been no resolution. In that case, you're using tentative as experimental, uncertain, we're not sure what's going to happen. The next word is unkempt. It's an adjective. It means not tidy, uncombed, unpolished, even rude. So, you could say, the unkempt state of my room drives my mother nuts. Or you could say, when the fire alarm went off in the middle of the night, everyone in the dormitory streamed outside with their hair unkempt because they'd been sleeping on it. What do you think? Is my hair unkempt now? Or do I have to do a little more work? The next word is verbatim. It's an adjective and an adverb, and it means exactly as written or spoken, word for word. So, on the internet, you can find the verbatim text of many great speeches throughout history. You could also say that um, when we say the Pledge of Allegiance, one person could start the pledge and everyone else repeats it verbatim, word for word. A way to remember this is, you know, the idea of verbal, right, of verbal communication being something that you do through words, or a verb, which is a word, okay? So, verbal, verbatim, with words, word for word. And finally, we have warily. It's an adverb. It means with great care. So, you could say, we opened the door warily, not sure what monster might be lurking inside. Warily. The adjective form is wary, W-A-R-Y. So, we were extremely wary of the stranger that we met on the side of the road. We thought he might be an axe murderer. Warily. Alright, and that's it. 
Unit one, you're all set. So watch this over again, see if you have any questions, bring them to me. Uh, if not, just keep committing these words to memory, try to use them as often as possible, and I will see you soon. Signing off with vocab video number one. I know you like the way I'm freaking it. I talk with slang and I'ma never stop speaking it. Speak with criminal slang. That's just the way that I talk, yo. Vocabulary spills, I'm ill. Speak with criminal slang. That's just the way that I talk, yo. Vocabulary